Let me, um, before we uh, take our break, let me share with you five devotions of leaders without titles. Pick one of them, practice them for how long? Until you reach the point of? Automat you guys, you're smart. Until you reach the point of automaticity. Then it becomes easier to do the new skill then? Not to do the new skill. Oh, all changes hard at first, messy in the middle, gorgeous. If look at your partner or someone you don't know around you and just repeat that brain tattoo. It's really valuable, just for a second. All change. Okay. Number one, huge, huge opportunity. Be so good at what you do that we cannot take our eyes off. Am I giving you lots of ideas? I'm curious. Yeah? Perfect. Lots of content? Yeah? Be so good at what you do, we can't take our eyes off of you. S Steve Martin was asked by a young Hollywood comedian, how can I be the next Steve Martin? He said, be so good at what you do that we cannot ignore you. The only reason you might not be at Iconic is because you haven't practiced your craft to the point that you are working at Iconic. I'll put it to you this way with deep respect. This is so important. The marketplace pays for the best. There are lots of, let's say, salespeople who aren't doing well, or lots of, let's say, performers. Some want to be in Vegas, they're not doing well, but why do they pay whoever? Like, I don't know, half a million or a million or five million for whoever it is playing on the strip here in Vegas. It's because they have so developed their skill to the point where the marketplace is willing to pay a fortune for them to express their skill. Was, were all these comedians here in Vegas and the singers and the performers and whoever, were they born into their genius? Was Guy, Le, Guy La Liberté? Who's that? Cirque du Soleil, I'm just trying to be relevant to Vegas here, right? But he wasn't born into it. Who, what, you know his backstory. He was a street performer. And then he got this idea, well, let's marry theatrics with the circus. And Barnum and Bailey was on the downslide. It was a dying industry. But because he was a visionary and then practiced his craft to the point where Cirque du Soleil became Cirque du Soleil, people were willing to fly from all around the world to visit Cirque du Soleil. You want to be so good at what you... Why did they pay these great athletes what they pay? Were they born into their giftedness? No. If you look at the best athletes in the world, it is not the most naturally talented who wins. It is the athlete who practices the most who wins. Commitment and character is more valuable than natural talent. The, the world is full of gifted geniuses who did zero. The world is full of great, talented athletes who did nothing because they couldn't make it to practice on time. The world is full of PhDs who could have been Darwins or Da Vinci's of their fields versus the Einsteins. I mean, look at, read the biographies on Einstein. I, I'm not that smart, is what he says. But all he did was practice and devote himself to one thing for years and years and years. And then, of course, he could see around corners. And so you want to be so good at what you do that when I watch you do what you do in front of a customer, I, I literally go, she, she's the Michelangelo or the Mother Teresa or whatever it is of what she's doing. When I watch you work, are you so good at what you do that tears come to my eyes because I'm witnessing a master in action? And this is such a gorgeous opportunity. Like, don't worry about the economy. Be so good, great. Be, be so fanatically, insanely 
great at what you do that you create your own economy. Wow, what a concept. What a, what a concept that you've read every book on that one thing. Maybe it's listening. Maybe it's selling. Maybe it's inspiring your team. You, you go into most restaurants, they are average. You go into, onto most airplanes, they are, at the food, right? F food is average. Go to mo most hotels or what? Tell me. You talk to most people, their conversation is? You, you talk to most strangers, their thinking is? You look at most people's houses or whatever it is, it's average. The world has sold us a bill of goods that we need to be card-carrying members of the cult of mediocrity. And the world has told us that the Richard Bransons and the Meg Whitmans and the Mother Teresas and the whoever's are somehow different. And that's just not true. And but because of that messaging, we have a self-identity of mediocrity. This is the psychology. Your income and influence and impact never rises higher than your self-identity. That, that idea alone is worth the price of this session. And, and people like, repeat it again? I can't remember this stuff. <laughs> your, your, your income, your impact, your creativity, who you are in the world, your health, it just all reflects your self-identity. Again, you want some science? Heidi Grant Halverson, one of the preeminent researchers in success, she says it comes, um, your results reflect your story. So what is the narrative, and I'm getting on, touching on all sorts of things, but it's just because you're giving me so much listening and so much attention and engagement that you're bringing out my best and I just want to serve you. No, that's why I'm doing all this, you know, because, you know, you know that's, that's all this is. That's, that's all this is. You know, you know, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. I, I hum humbly, very humbly thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's, it's a, honestly, it's, um, I, f I feel blessed to, to be here with you. And, uh, you know, it's just I, I celebrate you for being here because if every single one of us in this room even if 50% took these ideas and executed on them, profound change in your markets, in your communities, in the world, etc. So, what's your narrative? And you want to start knowing your narrative. You know, the narrative that you're running, that's what's limiting your income and your impact and your leadership. It's not the world. That's what victims say. It's because of him. It's because of them. It's because of the CERT product. Second thing to devote yourself to. You know, this is a big one. We could spend a whole day on this where I could walk you through my protocols and systems and daily rituals because the world is like suffering from collective attention deficit disorder. It's, it's unbelievable how few people, let me put it to you this way, your greatest gift to your life is the gift of you being present. The, the greatest gift to your children is you being present. The greatest gift to your customers is when you are in front of a customer. Don't be checking your notifications. Don't be disengaged. Don't be stuck in the past. Don't be asking yourself, how can I get the sale? Be fully present. And again, there's, there's science. Just Google this. Transient hypofrontality. Use that at the cocktail party tonight. <laughs> Transient hypofrontality. There's a whole model that we teach at Titan for, on it, but it's, you want me to quickly run through it? Yes. Are you serious? We have like three minutes before. Okay, anyone, are you willing for three minutes to really roll up your sleeves and learn this? Yes. Okay, and then we'll end on this. So if I had a, a flip chart, I don't need a flip chart. Most of us, when we're operating in the world, our brain waves are at beta. With me? Beta. That's why we're, you know, there's, the, like who puts radios in airports? Like, or not radios, uh, TVs. Like everywhere you go, there's distraction. 
And so the, you think the TV and the noise and the music and the elevator and on and on and on, you've become so used to it that you don't even notice it. But what all of the distractions are doing is they are depleting your focus, your energy, your willpower, and your game. Man, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Woo! Is, is it Sam? I, I think that's Sam. Ben. Ben, thank you. Now you know why I don't teach memory. So, so I don't know if we can have a camera on this or something. But anyway, we're at beta. We're at beta. And beta is because we're, we're not engaged with our lives. Okay, Most people think they're going to do genius level work thinking in beta. When you get into solitude, what I, I met, I think it's Beth, and she, you know, she said, we were talking about nature, and you know, she talked about the power of nature. Nature is really important to me. When you get out in nature, for example, or you, and again, ritualize it so it's not once a year, but when you get involved in nature, or when you spend time in silence, or when you write in a journal, your brain shifts from beta to, who can tell me? Alpha, smart gang. Your brain shifts to alpha. When you're, oh, that's cool. When your brain shifts to alpha, there's a, let's call it a greatness cocktail. Is that a good term we can make up today? Right, or an amplified, a, neurally, a neurologically amplified cocktail. And there's a release of dopamine. Dopamine, you want to get to know, because dopamine is the neurotransmitter of inspiration. When you learn how to release dopamine, and I can share with you exactly how to do this, I don't care if you're the crankiest person in your neighborhood, you will be on fire to change the game. And by the way, you don't change the game if you don't feel confident and inspired. You know when you feel depleted and scared? You don't do anything. It's the mindset and the confidence that brings on your A game. It's your story, your narrative. So you release dopamine, the inspirational neuro neurotransmitter, you release serotonin, which makes you feel happy. You release norepinephrine and it goes on and on. Mihai, Chikzent Mihai wrote a great book I, I encourage you to read called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. And he has studied the state of flow. So when you see great athletes, great violinists, great entrepreneurs, great business builders, great humanitarians, they were in a state of flow. That's why, for the Canadians, Gretzky could say, I went to where the puck was going rather than where it was. That's why Jordan did what he did. That's why Beckham did. That's why Rembrandt was it. They were in flow. You all have the ability to drop into flow. But if you have not constructed a life that allows you to tap into your inner genius, then you can't have it. Should we be teaching this to kids and people? It's pretty cool, right? So you then go into flow. Now here's the really cool part. The part of the brain responsible for reasoning and thinking is called the prefrontal cortex. They call it the, the crown jewel of brain development. This is where logic lives. This is where reasoning lives. With me on this? But here's the thing. It's also where your inner critic lives. So every time you say, I heard Robin, I've got 10 pages of notes. I'm going to go up there and be an A player, a game changer, a titan, a humanitarian. I'm going to live a legendary life. It's your, the chatter of your prefrontal cortex that convinces you not to execute on your ideas. But when you drop into flow, transient, here's where it comes in, transient hypofrontality. It doesn't last forever, so it's transient. Hypo means you shut down the prefrontal cortex. Is that, is that a cool model I just walked you through? Like, I, 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 you, know, you know, if we could get this model to the world, it would be really cool. So you then experience transient Prefrontal, tra sorry, transient hypo, excuse me, hypo frontality. 
And the beautiful thing is, you then connect to ideas you never thought you had. And that's why when you are in those rare moments on a beach in Barbados or walking in nature or swimming or maybe it's a morning workout, you get the ideas, you don't know where they came from that completely, ridiculously 100x your life. This is who you are. This is where your brain is meant to play. Visionaries don't build visions based on reason. Is, is this not true? The world doesn't get changed because of reason. Steve Jobs and Sergey Brin and Larry Page and Tony Shea and Jeff Bezos and Madonna and Kanye and Kardashian. All the interesting, <laughs> the interesting people who have changed the world didn't do it because of their reason. They did it because they were, you know, you read the philosophical books and it was, I was in my heart. So I talked a lot about <laughs> releasing distraction and that brought us into transient hypofrontality. The third thing to practice for 66 days is to avoid the arrogance of success. This, this is, I hope this really lands on you profoundly. Like what, I can't tell you how many Vegas performers are at the top of their game. The world beats a path to get to them. And guess what happens? When they become successful, they tear down everything they've built. Have you seen that? Have you seen companies? They are like iconic companies and they're successful and they become successful and they lose it. It could be a great hotel. The hotel, everyone's writing about it, travel and leisure speaks about it. And they start doing things where they take their eye off the ball and they lose the very things that made them successful. Let's apply this to you. How many people in this room feel you're successful? Put your hands up, curious. Okay, so most people, you are actually, to be very honest with you and candid, in the most dangerous position you have ever been in. You see, right now is where you can lose everything. What is cool to me is not to be world class for a week or a month or a year. You know where the icons play? How can I be world class for my entire career? Actually, the icons play, how can I build a legendary company, brand, reputation, so the generations will be speaking about me? Maybe you'll be like a Shakespeare, or a Michelangelo, or a Da Vinci. So I'm fascinated, even pop stars. You've got these pop stars, you know, and they're famous for one or two records. They sell 20 or 30 million copies, and then they start doing these destructive things which tear down their success. So let me just suggest to you, nothing fails like success. When you are successful, that's when you stop getting up early and doing your 20-20-20 formula, which I'm gonna talk about. When you are successful, it's easy to develop a mindset of arrogance. When you are successful, it's human nature to take your customers for granted. When you are successful, it's easy to start sabotaging your performance. When you are successful, it's easy to lose humbleness and humility, which I believe are the same things. When you are successful, it's easy to stop out learning your competition. When you are successful, I don't know if this is gonna make sense, you go, I'm already way more successful than I ever thought I was going to be. Why do I need to push harder? And what makes legendary versus great is you say, I'm the most successful I've ever been. Now let me roll up my sleeves and really get this started. Right?